heavy water reactor will use about 0.7% energy value, and the light water reactor will use about half of 1%. They both do terrible. At normal pressures, water will boil at 100 degrees Celsius. This isn't nearly hot enough to generate electricity effectively. So water-cooled reactors have to run at over 70 atmospheres of pressure. You have to build a water-cooled reactor as a pressure vessel. The number one accident people worry about Pressure is lost. Water that's being held 300 Celsius flashes to steam. Its volume increases roughly by a factor of a thousand. If you don't get emergency coolant to the fuel in the reactor, it can overheat and melt. This is what drives the design of this building. So if this happens, all the steam is captured in this building. Now the reactors we have today use uranium oxide as a fuel. It's a ceramic material, chemically stable, but not very good at transferring heat. If you lose pressure, you lose your water, and soon your fuel will melt down and release the radioactive fission products within it. So they have a series of emergency systems designed to always keep the core covered with water. We saw the failure of this at Fukushima Daiichi. You know, they had multiple backup diesel generators, and each one probably had a very high probability of turning on. The tsunami came and knocked them all out. People sometimes say, is nuclear energy safe? And the first thing I say is, well, which one? Thousands of different ways to do nuclear energy. Is the car safe? Well, which one? I had the good fortune to learn about a different form of nuclear power, the liquid fluoride thorium reactor. The lifter. The lifter. The lifter. The lifter. The liquid fluoride thorium reactor. The lifter. liquid fluoride thorium reactor. The lifter. The lifter. The lifter. The liquid fluoride thorium reactor. The lifter. liquid fluoride thorium reactor. Unlike the solid fuels that can melt down if you stop cooling them, these liquid fluoride fuels are already melted. Melt, 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 melt. In normal operation, you have a little piece of frozen salt that you've kept frozen by blowing cool gas over the outside of the pipe. Hi, 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 hi. It's not based on water cooling, and it doesn't use solid fuel. If there's an emergency and you lose all the power to your lifter, the little blower stops blowing, the frozen plug of salt melts, and the liquid fluoride fuel inside the reactor drains into another tank called a drain tank. Thorium is a naturally occurring nuclear fuel that is four times more common in the Earth's crust than uranium. Uranium. It's so energy dense that you can hold a lifetime supply of thorium energy in the palm of your hand. Hand, hand. We could use thorium about 200 times more efficiently than we're using uranium. uranium. This reduces the waste generated over uranium by factors of hundreds Hundred. and by factors of millions over fossil fuels. Fuel. We're still going to need liquid fuels for vehicles and machinery, but we could generate these liquid fuels from the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and from water, much like nature does. We could generate hydrogen by splitting water and combining it with carbon harvested from CO2 in the atmosphere, making fuels like methanol, ammonia, and dimethyl ether, which could be a direct replacement for diesel fuel. Imagine carbon neutral gasoline and diesel, sustainable and self produced. Different form of nuclear power. The liquid fluoride thorium reactor. The lifter. Heavy water reactor. The lifter. Molten salt reactor. The lifter. Heavy water reactor. The lifter. Molten salt reactor. The lifter. Heavy water reactor. The lifter. Molten salt reactor. The lifter. Liquid fluoride thorium reactor. The lifter. Liquid fluoride thorium reactor. The lifter. Heavy water reactor. The lifter. Molten salt reactor. The lifter. Heavy water reactor. The lifter. Molten salt reactor. The lifter. Heavy water reactor. The lifter. Molten salt reactor. The lifter. Liquid fluoride thorium reactor. The lifter. Liquid fluoride thorium reactor. We realized that through this process, if you had some uranium 233, you could catalyze the burning of thorium indefinitely. Every kilogram of fissile material will produce as much energy as 13,000 barrels of oil. Nuclear fission is a million times more energy dense than a chemical reaction. Civilization has changed over advancements in technology a whole lot more modest than this. Nobody counts that radon against the gas. If they did, <laughs> the regulatory commission would shut the gas plant down. Same with coal. Coal contains small amounts of uranium and thorium. They go up the stack, they're dispersed. And they've spent a lot of money to make sure that regulatory agencies do not regulate NORM for a gold or coal or a gas plant the way they regulate radioactive emissions from a nuclear plant. If they did, we would be shutting down all our coal and gas plants based on radioactivity alone. Maybe there's a better way. There. Heavy water reactor. The lifter. Molten salt reactor. The lifter. Heavy water reactor. The lifter. Molten salt reactor. The lifter. Heavy water reactor. 
the lifter. Molten salt reactor, the lift. The liquid fluoride thorium reactor, the lift. Liquid fluoride thorium reactor, the lifter. Heavy water reactor, the lifter. Molten salt reactor, the lifter. Heavy water reactor, the lifter. Molten salt reactor, the lifter. Heavy water reactor, the lifter. Molten salt reactor, the lift. Liquid fluoride thorium reactor, the lift. Liquid fluoride thorium reactor. They took him around the lab and showed him everything. And we get to the end of the trip, and the Chinese official's name was Dr. Zhang Ming Han. Interesting about Dr. Zhang Ming Han, his father was Zhang Zemin, who used to be the premier of China. So this is not a poorly placed guy in Chinese society. Well, we said, well, you had this great trip. Have you learned what you wanted to learn? And they go, we're actually here to learn about the molten salt reactor. See, we're going to build one. We've already got a site picked out, and we're going to have it built by 2020, and we're here to learn everything we can about it. We live much better lives today because we have learned how to use carbon. Okay. What about thorium? Thorium has a million times the energy density of a carbon-hydrogen bond. What could that mean for human civilization going out thousands, tens of thousands of years into the future? Because we're not going to run out of this stuff. Once we've learned how to use it at this kind of efficiency, we will never run out. It is simply too common. Maybe there's a better way. You can figure out how to do this better. I will be happy to get off Lifter and go do whatever it is that's better. This is the best way I've been able to come up with so far. If Bill Gates wants to save a lot of money, he can get in touch with me, and I think I could talk him out of traveling wave. He won't return my calls. No. Don't feel bad.